I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Central America. Today, I had a conversation with someone who was very excited to learn that 80% of Americans are leaving Costa Rica after less than two years. And he was thinking that this meant that the Americans in general were leaving Costa Rica. But unfortunately, Costa Rica has an American problem and it's not going to be solved as easily as that. But there's some misunderstandings as to what this might mean that so many Americans are leaving Costa Rica. So let's dig into that on today's show. I'm actually filming today's episode at three o'clock in the afternoon. It is this dark in the middle of the afternoon. There's a big storm rolling in. I'm looking forward to some rain here in the tropics in Central America. Rain can be absolutely gorgeous. I love it when it rains here, but it can be a little bit of a challenge for the show. So Costa Rica, we almost all are aware that Costa Rica suffers from a blight of Americans. Now, that's putting it pretty harshly, but way too many foreigners, Americans and otherwise, gringos as we'll call them, have moved into Costa Rica. Why? Well, because Costa Rica is fantastic, right? It's an absolutely beautiful country. It has amazing ocean fronts. It has a really interesting large city. It has a great food selection and partially because so many foreigners have moved in, but also, you know, chicken and egg, they have a really good tourism infrastructure. They have lots of great hotels. They have good public transportation within the country, including trains, not a many, but they do have trains, something that people are surprised by. They have great uh, restaurant options, things that a lot of their neighboring countries uh, either don't have at all or have in much more limited supply. So Costa Rica has a tendency to draw people for a lot of reasons. Plus, and this is very important as to why it is culturally the way that it is, Costa Rica is very close physically to the United States and very close politically to the United States. And because of this, the United States has a tendency to promote tourism to Costa Rica and tourism to any country like that also promotes relocation and expatriate. And very recently, Costa Rica has also done some things to promote digital nomadry as well. So a lot of things are going on in Costa Rica. And there's a lot of good reasons why loads and loads of people choose Costa Rica as a place to vacation, of course. But what we're talking about in this video is they're choosing to expat to Costa Rica. And that could include buying a home and living there a quarter of the time, maybe snowbirding half the year, or maybe moving and living there year round. Now, in a recent video, we talked about how 80% of Americans are found to be leaving Costa Rica after having moved there. This is not tourists. These are people who made the intent of going to Costa Rica to maybe not buy a home, but they put in the paperwork and declared to the government that they were moving uh, to Costa Rica. So they were seeking residency and possibly citizenship in the future, but residency is what we're concerned about. Of those within the first two years, 80% have been found or higher are leaving the country before the two-year mark, because they're just finding it, for whatever reason, not to be what they were looking for. Maybe they didn't understand the culture. Maybe they were not prepared for the food. Maybe the cost of living was higher than they were led to believe. Maybe they just didn't understand what it's like living away from their primary country. There's a million different reasons why someone may choose to no longer be an expat or not to be an expat in a single country. This news uh, should not be too surprising. And we dug into some of the factors as to why, and, and we had a great video that referenced this, that we dug into lots of reasons why people might be leaving Costa Rica. And we went into some additional Costa Rica, because of the things we mentioned, is super popular and people have a tendency, especially from the U.S. and Canada, to pick it without doing their research or any research at all. They hear it's great, they think it's going to be a miracle, and then they go there and either they find out that it's not what they were thinking or they didn't do a comparison against other countries. And once they've discovered, uh, discovered other countries, they realize that there's a mix of factors everywhere and that you can't just pick a place at random. You have to choose it specifically. And so these things have a tendency to cause people to leave in good numbers. Okay, so that's the basis. So someone responded, wow, if 80% are leaving, that's great. Costa Rica has so many foreigners, this is going to help. Well, it's not that easy. So let's say that you have a, a number of, and I'm going to make something up. Let's say you have 1 million foreigners living in Costa Rica, which would be a dramatic number, right? This is a country of only 5.5 million people. So this would be nearly 20% of the population would be foreigners. That's crippling to just about any country. 
So let's just say you have a million. And then you say, well, over the course of two years, 800,000 of those are going to leave because that's how it works. And we're assuming that all these people just started the process. I know that that's not how it works. We're, we're trying to make this as simple as possible. So a million people have come in somehow all at once. And now you have roughly 400,000 leaving per year. Of course, that's also not a steady number. It's like 600,000 in the first year, 200,000 in the second year. Maybe that's reversed. Maybe a lot of people give it one year, but at the second year, they start to give up. Who knows, right? We'd have to get really detailed statistics on that. It would be super interesting to see that, but I don't know where we're going to get that. Okay, but so let's just work with this basic. We started at a million, and now we have 400,000 leaving per year. In theory, that means we will have uh, most of them gone after two years, and if that was all we were worried about, we'd be at zero at some point in the future, but that's not actually how it works. What's really going on is that a certain number of people move into Costa Rica every year and a certain number move out. Now, the only thing that it takes for the number, the total number of people to be growing in the country during the course of a year, my dog is here drinking the water out of the flowers, uh, is that the number of people coming in is greater than the number that's leaving. So over the course of two years, we're saying 80% will leave. We're going to make this simple and pretend no one leaves after that point. Of course, they do. But roughly 20% are going to stay, or at least stay for so long that essentially they have stayed. Well, at that pace, if we are bringing in 1 million people per year, that means we have an increase in the total number after two years of 200,000. So it doesn't imply that Costa Rica is losing Americans. It means that the number of Americans that are going, spending two years and then leaving, is much, much higher than the number who actually stay behind to make it a long-term home. It's the ones that stay behind to make it a long-term home that create the continuous growing presence of expats. So that number has proven to remain fairly large, that the number of expats in Costa Rica just keeps growing. And this, of course, can be explained by the fact that Costa Rica is a beautiful country, has great food, has a great tourist infrastructure, uh, has, you know, all these things that draw those people in and, and a certain number of them say, oh, I definitely want to stay. And you could be going anywhere and a certain number are going to give up. No, you, no one country ever has 100% retention on expats coming in. Like that would be physically impossible. Uh, the thing that's really hurt in Costa Rica uh, is there's two things. One is the general number of foreigners, of gringos who are living there in just in total, that number has gotten really large and it is put in, putting a burden on Costa Rican society. And this is leading to some animosity, maybe not with individuals, but with the overall just allowance of so many foreigners to live within the country. That's something that many Costa Ricans, not certainly not all, but many Costa Ricans are, are beginning to express a displeasure with their country allowing in so many foreigners and, and not having a means for that to result in a direct uh, demonstrable increase in quality of life for the Costa Ricans whose country it is and, and are not always benefiting from all those foreigners being there. It raises the cost of real estate. It raises the cost of food. It puts a strain on the infrastructure. It makes their country just a lot more populous than it would be otherwise. And those are things that some people see as a bonus. Some people see as neutral. Some people see as a pretty strong negative. So you have to kind of frame this and understand that society is going to have a lot of views on this. But So the number that stay behind in general are going to be the best. It's, it's, the, it's the ones that you want. They're the ones that are in Costa Rica and they're happy and they're liking it and they're finding that they can, they can make a life. And typically that means that they're learning at least some amount of Spanish. It means that they're integrating into the culture at least some amount, or they are finding that enclave living works for them and they are happy enough being completely isolated in their enclaves. And believe it or not, the enclaves don't do the damage to society as much as you might think because they're so isolated, but they do generate tax revenue. They do generate jobs, but they don't tend to go out and spread into society. So if you're worried about population uh, density within the cities, well, the enclaves don't affect that. Uh, if you're worried about, uh, you know, people being in your restaurants, people being on the street, generating traffic, typically enclaves don't do that, or maybe very little. They tend to be very isolated, hence the term enclave. And so those who are going for that often end up, while they may use up some prime beachfront, they may be a bit of society that, that Costa Ricans in general aren't interested in and find kind of annoying, 
they often keep to themselves and actually don't create that many problems, if any, right? Certainly they'll probably create a few, but very minimal. And so enclaves actually don't often cause that many problems. Uh, here in Nicaragua, right? If you have a, a really serious enclave, typically no one knows about it or barely anyone knows about it because they keep to themselves. It's the places that are only marginally enclaves and still have a lot of interaction with the rest of Nicaragua that tend to be seen as more problematic because they're somewhere in this middle ground that isn't very good. If someone moves into the country and fully integrates into society, well, they just blend in and disappear as an expat. The only thing is they add a, you know, a little bit to the population and they bring in some outside revenue. That's pretty positive. If you're completely isolated in an enclave, typically you don't interact with anybody and cause no problems whatsoever. Also, bringing in tax money and, and revenue. So that's generally a positive. In between, you have people who are not integrating into society, but are interacting with society, generating traffic, uh, interfacing with businesses, raising the prices at places that other people are going, this is where you tend to start to experience problems is when they, the two worlds start to mix. And that's where Costa Rica is suffering, that there is a, a lot of people that fall into that category. But the people who stay long term generally are the most likely to fall into either being completely enclave, because for the same thing, in the opposite direction, if you're someone who wants to be in an enclave but is not managing to be that way, and so you're having some amount of interaction but you don't want to integrate, you're in the most likely group to not be happy with your situation. People who love the completely the complete isolation of the enclave, well, the fact that they're in Costa Rica is basically not gonna affect them. If they like enclaves, they like it. And if you wanna fully integrate, then chances are you want to do that because you love Costa Rican culture and society and the people and, and you're gonna do great, right? And Costa Rica is gonna love having you. You're gonna be a great neighbor that everybody wants to have. So those two groups tend to be the ones that manage to stay long-term and it's the people who don't go one way or the other and stay in the middle that tend to be the most damaged to society or the most problems or struggles, they're also the ones who are the most likely to give up and want to leave because it's not working for them either. Where Costa Rica has its biggest struggle is the huge number of expats that are moving into the country every given year. These people who are coming in and are in their first two years and are likely, very, very likely to fail and decide to move on in the future, before they do that, end up being basically, in most cases, big blights on society because they, they tend to overspend and create huge boosts in the cost of living. They tend to not hire staff and not do things to create jobs. They tend to not integrate, so they, they often have an oil and water kind of presence with the local culture. Uh, and, and they're often struggling and unhappy. That creates the biggest set of problems. And not that they're there to cause problems, not that they want to not be great members of society, but they're they're not sure why they're there. They, they haven't gotten their feet under them. They may turn into one of these great groups, but the chances of that are low. 80% chance they're going to give up. And of those that stay behind, some remain in a not very positive uh, role in society. So it's still not like guaranteed that just because you make it into that final 20% that you're going to be good. It's also true that just because you're in the first 80% that you might still be good, right? So it goes both ways. But you have this giant number of people who are most likely to be the ones struggling coming in every year. And so Costa Rica at any given time has a truly enormous number of people who are within those first two years. So if we're using our first example, let's say that, you know, 500,000 people are coming in each year, 400,000 then leave, right? So you're having a per year growth of, of whatever that comes out to 100,000. And, but you have this 400,000 that's always there struggling and being unhappy and not sure how to use services and, and doing things that aren't great in the enclave way and things that aren't great in an integration way and they haven't managed to integrate and they, they probably don't speak Spanish yet because it's just too fast and uh, they, they don't know what things sh should cost and they're, they're not participating in things and they're disrupting the communities that they move into unless they're in an enclave and it just... This is this huge number. If you look at other countries, right, their, their turnover rates aren't like this. And so that new number of expats per year is much, much smaller. And you're able to absorb it far better. So we'll use Nicaragua as an example, someone who is pretty much the polar opposite nearby. Nicaragua sees, to the best of our knowledge, a very different number where the majority of people successfully stay. Uh, of course, people do a lot more research before coming to Nicaragua. People are much less likely to go, well, it's the default, I'll just give it a try, right? It's anything but. So it gets a very different uh, group of people coming into it. But the demographics of, of people leaving is very different as well. So in Nicaragua, we have a small number every year. Instead of hundreds of thousands, we may have thousands or tens of thousands. And of those 
instead of most leaving, most are going to stay, and most are in in a good path towards moving towards a, a, a long term life here and and one that's successful on all sides. And so, because the number is so much smaller, and because Nicaragua is a larger country, about two million people, larger than Costa Rica, and there's more open land, which only has a minimal effect, but does help a little bit. You're a little bit less on top of each other most of the time. We don't have the big city like San Jose, where a lot of expats are, are also living, right? Our beaches aren't as crowded and so forth. Because of this, Nicaragua has so much more capacity to focus on the individual person, whether it's helping them or simply absorbing whatever problems they, they kind of provide that, it, uh, that they create, that we don't see things like the huge growth in consumer price index the way that Costa Rica does, right? Costa Rica suffers from all these expats inflating the prices of things. Nicaragua does not, right? Because it's percentages and the percentage of brand new people and brand new people tend to just throw money at things. And this breaks a lot of things, right? You start going and like, well, you know, I'm used to tipping three times the the standard here i'm just going to keep doing that because i don't know what to do well that creates tip sprawl in the way that we tip inflation the way that the united states sees right and pretty soon people are like why well, only want to work with the people who just came in and uh, we don't have to provide them good service because they tip well regardless of the service because they never come back again so we don't have to worry about it and suddenly you, you get a drop in quality with an increase in price and things start in like society starts to break down and that's where costa rica is facing problems now is that uh, a lot of things are just wacky the cost of some things are just insanely high access to some resources very very bad it's just it's very difficult dealing with a society that has this giant number of new expats. A huge number of permanent expats is generally not a problem. If you took them on all at once, yes, that's a problem. But just having loads and loads of expats doesn't necessarily mean you're going to struggle. At some point, there's a tipping point and there's just too many as a volume. Right. But that's a big number in most co countries. But Costa Rica is, is facing a problem where the the temporary turnover number is so large that it's impacting their entire society. And it alone is so large that it reduces the quality of life for the people who are long term staying to integrate and those who are long term staying to be in an enclave. Everyone is suffering from this constant turnover of people who are moving in and acting like residents. But in the end, kind of acting like long-term tourists, somewhere there's a, there's a happy middle ground. And so there's not, we don't have a good answer to this, right? I don't have a proposal for Costa Rica. This is to explain why Costa Rica is the way that it is, why this is something that's a major concern for them, and why the people who might hear this news and be excited that the, the expats are going to drain out of the country is not at all what this represents. What this represents is a really unhealthy mode of bringing in potential new expats. It's more like the training and education phase is way too easy to get into. And this is definitely something that Nicaragua and many other countries, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, El Salvador a little bit less, but definitely Honduras, right, really benefit from it being less popular, from being it more uh, difficult to get information online. People who are coming to these countries are doing their research and they're self-filtering before they get here. People who are like, oh, it's too warm. I don't want to go there. They're not coming in the first place. People who have no interest in learning Spanish ever. You don't need it to come initially, but you're going to benefit from learning it long term. If you're not willing to put in that, that time, chances are you're going to rule it out ahead of time. You're not going to come and find that out after putting in a couple unhappy months here. right? And so it's a completely different group of people that are making the effort to come to Nicaragua than to go to Costa Rica. If I was to propose something to Costa Rica, the thing that I would say is they need to put an effort into educating potential residents as to what life is really like in Costa Rica, making it more educational so that people who are looking to move have a much better view of what they're getting into, what it's going to actually cost, what life is going to be like day to day, what housing is like, what traffic is like what the actual housing options are, are like and all these things. And having that information, much like this channel does for Nicaragua, Costa Rica needs that because if people, but they also need people to understand they need to do that research. I could move to Costa Rica today, start making the same content that we do for Nicaragua about Costa Rica day to day. And yes, a few people would find it useful and that would be good for them. But that would represent a very small percentage of the total number of people who are moving into Costa Rica. Many of them will never look online. They're never going to look for a channel. And if they do, one of the things that Costa Rica suffers from is that there are so many people out there selling services, right? They're selling real estate or they're selling relocation services or selling legal services, something where you go to their channel and yes, they're going to be like, yeah, you got to come to Costa Rica and I'll help you. Here's what I offer. 
they have to sell you on the idea of going to Costa Rica. They're not going to warn you, well, maybe it's not for you. Maybe you should look at these other countries. Maybe you should reconsider whether relocation is right for you. Maybe you should look at English speaking countries because this, you know, you have to learn Spanish eventually to fully integrate. Or are you really thinking enclave? Then you need to do this. Or you're really thinking integration. Then you need to do this and so forth. Those things don't pay. And so it only works if you have resources like this one where we're not trying to make money off of telling people about different places. We're just enjoying sharing that information with you and trying to help you make good decisions. So uh, short of that, uh, Costa Rica is going to continue because so many uh, businesses are pushing for this. The people who are there and often failing, people who have struggled to become integrated or failed to get into an enclave, now they're trying to make money. Now they're trying to see where they have an opportunity. And often in getting money from the next group of people coming in, not doing their research is exactly how they can make their easy money in Costa Rica. So as long as that exists, those people are going to be lured there. And that is simply a difficult problem. At some point, Costa Rica has to choose to shut off the, the valve um, and make that difficult for people to move in so that they get a slower stream of people. It's a difficult decision given that tourism is the basis of their economy. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the work that we do here because we don't sell any services. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you from beautiful Central America tomorrow. And we're going to pop some videos up on the screen. Feel free to click on one of those or scroll down on YouTube, pick something else. And even if you're not going to watch it, just let it play in the background. It helps YouTube's algorithm know that this show was valuable to you.